గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ వెల్కమ్ మరి డే నైన్టీన్ క్లాప్ టూ స్పోకెన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ సిరీస్ ఆఫ్ క్లాప్ టూ ప్రోగ్రాంలో మీ అందరికీ స్వాగతం తెలియజేస్తున్నాను మరి ఈరోజు మంచి ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ టాపిక్తో మనతో సుమన్ బండి గారు ఉన్నారు డాక్టర్ సుమన్ బండి గారు యూ ప్లీజ్ వెల్కమ్ టు టుడే సెషన్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ అండ్ ఐ ఆల్సో వెల్కమ్ మిస్టర్ పోకూరు శ్రీనివాస్ గారు ఫ్రమ్ డిజిటల్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ వింగ్ అండ్ దిస్ ఈజ్ డాక్టర్ ఇస్మాయిల్ లెట్ అస్ సి టుడేస్ టాపిక్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాక్టీస్ ఇన్ మాస్టరింగ్ స్పోకెన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ సో ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ పోకూరు శ్రీనివాస్ గారు టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ అవర్ రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్స్ టు వ్యూవర్స్ Uh, uh, good morning on this today we have here uh, uh, suman bandi garu suman bandi garu a known uh, trainer to on uh, this uh, um i'm a regional institute of english uh, bangalore is a teacher trainer and also uh, helped on uh, this in many of the english unit so, sir we heartily welcome to the session please start the session thank you sir so good morning dear teachers i welcome you to yet another interesting session as a part of the spoken english uh, programs so i welcome all of you to webinar 19 today's topic will be the importance of mastering uh, the importance of practice in mastering uh, spoken english so as all of you know this is a very important aspect of uh, uh, of spoken english as you know uh, mastering spoken english requires a lot of continuous efforts and uh, consistent uh, practice so in this context uh, i personally feel uh, this is something very important for all of us as uh, english language uh, teachers as well as uh, learners because all of us know that language learning any language learning is a continuous process so let us start by our session by a small quotation mend your speech a little less you may mar your future by the great writer william shakespeare so he has said this in one of his uh, famous plays uh, king lear such is the importance of speech so if you do not mend your speech a little speech uh, effective speech has uh, such an effect that it can uh, mar your future importance of spoken english so what are we going to look at today as a part session we will look at uh, what is the relevance of practice in mastering spoken english so what is the role that practice in mastering spoken english and how can we make this practice as an essential part of our learning and uh, what are the discourses important discourse that we should uh, practice there are various uh, discourses available so what discourses should we focus on depending on our uh, requirements or learning goals and we'll also look at uh, the various ways and sources to practice what are the different ways that we can uh, practice uh, spoken english and also what are the important sources that we can make use in order to practice spoken english start is a very important question for uh, all of us now all of us to say are primary teachers isn't it so by qualification and by experience uh, more or less we are all the same but when it comes to language proficiency are we all the same definitely not when we analyze our individual proficiencies or capabilities language capabilities all of us are different each one of us has uh, our own uh, varying levels of uh, uh, proficiency and when it comes to our own abilities individual abilities uh, uh, you know capabilities uh, uh, changes so what do i mean by this for example some of us may be very good at speaking but when it comes to writing we may not be that confident so an important thing to know is uh, where to start so when you think of where to start we need to ask ourselves some basic questions like where are we now 
what is our uh, present uh, or current language capability or capacity what is my level of uh, proficiency so can i use uh, english uh, fluently and uh, what about my accuracy which means uh, uh, whenever i am able to uh, whenever i use language uh, uh, how accurate is my language usage how correct is my language usage how correct is my pronunciation how about my word choice and uh, pronunciation are my sentences grammatically well framed so these are some important questions that we need to ask uh, ourselves uh, nobody can answer these questions uh, uh, for us so in order to know where to practice what to practice what kind of discourses are important for us what are the things that we should focus more on it is very important that we start by uh, understanding our own present abilities or capabilities or language uh, proficiency so how much english should i know as an english uh, uh, primary teacher even if i am not an english teacher am i teaching other subjects in english so i am sure now in the present context with the ap government changing uh, the syllabus into english medium uh, all of you have to teach if not english uh, the other subjects also in english so this becomes a very important question for us how much english should i know as uh, an english medium primary teacher now this is not easy to answer this question so why is it not easy because uh, we cannot measure language uh, in such uh, visible uh, quantifiers it is difficult but still we need to make an attempt we should be able to make statements about our present uh, language uh, capacity so how can we do that it is not easy but we still should uh, make an attempt for example uh, uh, one way of uh, arriving at this understanding is uh, taking some tests language tests there are many standard language tests uh, uh designed which are available for free online if you remember uh, one of our resource persons dr purnima has actually mentioned some tests which are available freely cambridge tests or uh, british council tests uh, on these websites so you should look for such tests and take such tests uh, and try to know what is your uh, present uh, proficiency level and another reference that i would like to make is uh, in one of the recent uh, sessions uh, if you remember dr ravi narayan uh, in his session uh, mentioned about uh, cefr common european framework for languages right so there uh, he has mentioned he has talked about uh, the standard levels if you remember a1 b1 c1 c2 levels so by thoroughly reading uh, such documents uh, you can also get an understanding of uh, Uh, where you are right now so when you read and uh, get to know these uh, levels uh, of proficiency thoroughly uh, you can make statements about uh, your own ability present ability or uh, proficiency levels so like you can easily answer questions like uh, how good is my grammar am i aware of uh, the basic grammar right uh, uh, how frequent are my pronunciation mistakes how about my vocabulary choice so once we are able to make such statements uh, we can easily uh, get to know where to start what are the uh, things that we should focus more on next this is something important for us to know what actually communication skills are when we refer to communication skills using a language so using a language is basically a skill i'm sure all of you will agree with me and are already aware of this so using a language is a skill so how is a skill and knowledge different how are skill and knowledge different skill we learn by practice whereas when it comes to knowledge knowledge is mainly information right so when we say we are learning to use a language or mastering a particular skill what actually makes it a skill so if using language is a skill can you think of some other skills 
can you just type in the chat box any other skills that you are aware of I want you to think about any other skills that you are aware of. Your own skills. All right. When you think of other skills, sir, what are the most common skills? Sir? You can think of uh, skills like uh, driving or uh, cooking. These are some of the important skills that we do on a regular uh, uh, basis. So, what comes to your mind when you think of a skill? So, all skills uh, can be learned by repeated or regular practice. So, the word practice becomes very important. Uh, when it comes to skill so just like we have learned other skills like common skills like cooking painting drawing or uh, driving so the same thing can be applied to english as well so learning language any language not only english learning language is not difficult but it is only a matter of how regularly we practice how consistently we practice so many teachers think it is difficult but uh, it is not difficult it is just a matter of time this is something important that we need to understand so when we talk about a skill we also have some sub skills like when we use a language what are the different ways in which we can use a language like uh, listening speaking reading writing lsrw as we commonly call them in the short form so all lsrw are uh, sub skills of uh, language as a skill so out of which uh, speaking is also a sub skill so the only way we can learn these skills is by constant uh, but one important thing for us to understand is uh, this ability also has some knowledge part of it so using a language being able to is a skill part has a skill part where uh, we need to develop all the four lsrw skills now today's session we are talking about speaking skill and there's also a part of knowledge to speak users should act on a knowledge of grammar and vocabulary so in order to in order to be able to master the skill uh, it requires uh, an amount of uh, knowledge of grammar and vocabulary so unless we are aware of basic vocabulary and grammar we cannot completely master this ability to uh, speak so this is very important for us to understand why because most of the time we read we get as information as knowledge from grammar books and uh, vocabulary books and the uh, learning stops there we fail to make efforts in order to use or apply this knowledge into practical uh, usage or uh, skill based uh, practice so this is something uh, we need to understand as uh, 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 learners as well as uh, even teachers so even as a teacher of english when we are teaching english in the classroom we need to not only provide information about elements like grammar and vocabulary but also make sure that these are regularly uh, practiced in the classroom now memory also has a very important role to play here so what is the role regular practice by making or doing regular practice uh, when we come across words language expressions uh, through the practice lot of repetition happens and this repetition helps uh, language move from short term memory to long term memory so this is how words uh, phrases and important language functions or structures can be registered so this is important for us to understand this is where uh, uh, practice plays an important role so the practice helps us uh, to 
repeated exposure of uh, language, which in turn helps uh, for these uh, language expressions, terms, phrases to move from short term memory to long term memory. So before we start talking about uh, how should we practice this uh, spoken skills, it is important for us to understand the relation between these uh, skills, LSRW skills. So as you can see, all these subskills of language are basically divided into two skills, that is a receptive skills and a productive skills. So what are receptive skills? Reading and listening. These are speaking and writing. So when we say we use a language, we are communicating in a language, we are either speaking, writing. So when we are speaking or we are writing, we are using a language, we are producing the language. That is why we refer to them as productive skills. But before we can speak or we can write, before, before we can produce or communicate in a language, it is important that we receive the language as an input. So when we have enough reception of language, when we are exposed to language through reading, and these skills act as input skills sir, where we learn, we become aware of various words, phrases, sentence structures. Only after a, a good amount of reception, after good amount of reading or listening and understanding what we read and listen, then finally we are able to produce listening and speaking. So this is something important. So spoken English, when we say we are actually talking about a productive skill, but what is important is if we have to develop this ability, we need to expose ourselves. We need to receive English, to expose to be uh, uh, to good English in the form of uh, reading and uh, listening. So in order to simplify this relationship, uh, let us look at this uh, picture. So this picture represents the input output hypothesis of a language. So just like we have uh, just discussed, uh, speaking and writing are productive abilities or productive skills. So before these, uh, before these abilities, we can learn these abilities, uh, that is uh, output, we can produce output language output, uh, learners need a lot of input in the form of listening and reading. So these uh, uh, two are important uh, skills for us in the initial stages. But again, listening and speaking are connected uh, in a different way. So they are corresponding input and output. Now our focus right now is spoken English. So as you can see, speaking is directly corresponds to the listening skill. When you talk to somebody, you are listening to what somebody is speaking. So if you have to improve your spoken English skills, your focus uh, should be in the initial stages, mainly on listening as an input. So you have to explore a lot of uh, listening, uh, good English discourses, which lead to comprehension as well as uh, awareness of vocabulary and basic structures. So that is why this important uh, is very important for us as both learners as well as teachers. Now, having understood this relationship, uh, now let us talk about uh, what should we practice. So this is uh, very, very important. So if we apply our understanding of what we have just discussed, the relation between these LSRW skills, as you have seen, we need to create a language environment for us, for ourselves. If uh, developing spoken English is our prime goal, the first thing that we should do is uh, create a language environment, create English environment uh, for us. So as a part of that, uh, uh, what should we practice? First is, uh, Listen to, I just said, uh, listening and speaking are uh, corresponding input and output skills. When you listen, you listen to what somebody speaks. So you should do a lot of listening and the effort should be listen to understand, not just listen, but listen to understand. So when you listen or expose yourself uh, to some listening, uh, 
from some form of listening your effort should be in order to understand what you listen because this understanding uh, forms a repertoire or a storehouse of words and uh, phrases for you so that when you are ready to speak when you get an opportunity to speak uh, you can be ready to speak uh, whatever you have learned we can you can select uh, words and uh, uh, expressions from this uh, storehouse of uh, knowledge so listening becomes an important uh, uh, input uh, skill next uh, reading to understand so as i said listening is uh, more importantly when spoken english is your goal but it doesn't mean that reading doesn't lend to your spoken english reading also can lend to your uh, spoken english so these are just different forms of uh, inputs for example if you are talking about a story you can either listen to a story or you can also read uh, uh, the story so when you read the story certain advantages are there for example you can pay more attention to the vocabulary and language uh, uh, forms the text is there with you for a longer time so you can pay attention to the grammar implicit grammar you can pay attention to language functions etc but when you are listening to the same story the advantage is that you can uh, learn to the pronunciation and the tone related aspects pronunciation related aspects which cannot be possible when you are reading that is why listening plays a more important role compared to reading if your goal is a spoken english so listening should be your major form of input uh, Uh, initially when you are trying to master spoken english uh, sometimes it is also important to read because uh, from reading uh, you can easily learn vocabulary as well as uh, pay attention to grammar and uh, structures that are uh, used so even while reading uh, your uh, focus should be on understanding right understanding uh, the meaning so these two are major forms of uh, input so we have to make sure that uh, we do regular listening as well as uh, reading whenever possible now vocabulary and grammar these are not skills but these are uh, elements we call them we refer to them as elements of uh, language but as i said uh, earlier in the beginning vocabulary and grammar uh, a basic understanding of vocabulary and grammar are very important uh, in your ability to even in your ability to uh, speak so should we learn vocabulary and grammar separately so no need most of your vocabulary and grammar needs uh, will you will automatically learn uh, when you listen and read to various uh, english uh, texts in various uh, contexts formal as well as informal contexts most of these needs sometimes maybe you need to specifically focus on vocabulary and grammar and where and how we can do that we'll uh, uh, in detail we'll look at a little bit later so these four elements listening to understand reading to understand uh, and vocabulary and grammar form a very important part of uh, your uh, exposure your input uh, the basic words and the structures in order to be able to use so once we have uh, once we make this uh, practice a part of our daily routine the most important thing uh, is uh, speaking at the opportunity so all these exposure all these practice has to lead to speaking ultimately we are learning all this we are receiving all these we are doing all this practice uh, finally to communicate that is to so whenever you get an opportunity you should start using the structures that you have learned uh, when you speak about whatever new words and uh, structures that you are uh, learning on a regular or a continuous basis next uh, so we look at uh, what what to read what are the different discourses that we should listen and read as i said listening should play a major uh, role so when it comes to listening what can we listen to what to listen to as uh, to offer us in the most so what can we listen to you can listen to people around you there may be people around you in your school or in your training venues uh, or in your neighborhood 
who can speak better english than you so whenever there are better speakers of english uh, using english uh, you can listen to them so whenever you get such opportunities you can listen to them now television can also an offer uh, a range of uh, discourses range of uh, context uh, in which you can listen as you can see all these are uh, different contexts and uh, different discourses uh, where uh, language is uh, used uh, spoken language is used news documentaries cookery shows sports interviews debates serials and movies and uh, earlier when it comes to stories and novels we only had to read uh, uh, books and stories uh, in the form of a uh, print media but now online you have lot of uh, sources where uh, stories and novels are converted as uh, audio stories and audio books so that you can listen so somebody speaks up these uh, stories records them for your convenience so most of the classic literature short stories including short stories and uh, novels uh, have been converted into audios and most of these content is available freely online now youtube i don't have to tell you about youtube youtube has become such an important part such a, a common part of our daily routine we depend on youtube for many things right so if you want to learn about uh, certain things uh, or if you want information about uh, uh, something you immediately go to uh, youtube and uh, if you want to learn how to cook something you go to youtube where there are a lot of learning videos uh, uh, so youtube also can give you a variety of contents uh, uh, all that that a television can offer you ha- can also be accessed uh, through youtube now, apart from these uh, you have lot of stories documentaries and uh, english content uh, uh, english songs like english songs uh, from the youtube and there are lot of videos related to teaching right for your learning purposes as well as teaching purposes uh, you have uh, a range of uh, content uh, in youtube and the most important thing is learning channels there are many learning channels in youtube nowadays uh, english learning channels so experts uh, who can help you with learning various aspects of language learning uh, they start learning channels uh, and they run these channels on a regular basis they upload a lot of videos so just like our apscrt apscrt youtube channel is also an example of a learning channel so this channel has been started uh, with the objective to help uh, uh, teachers so this is a good example of learning channel similarly there are lot of such uh, learning channels uh, available on youtube you just have to be aware of them you just have to start using these uh, browsing these kinds of contents now mobile apps so the most important uh, uh, advantage of mobile apps is a mobile is always there with you your smartphone nowadays everybody has a smartphone so there are a lot of mobile apps coming up uh, uh, very important very useful apps uh, uh, specifically in order to help us to improvise uh, spoken english not only spoken english you have a uh, lot of specific apps like uh, apps to develop your writing skills dictionary apps grammar based apps uh, so similarly you have wonderful applications uh, in the google play store which can help you through uh learning spoken english so the advantage of these apps is uh, as i told you you can practice wherever you are for example most of you travel from your home to school when your school is away so while traveling or sitting in a bus uh, you can you're waiting for somebody right so your mobile is in your hands you can instant uh, you know access this uh, apps so the only thing is you have to start browsing using these apps and personally find out uh, which ones are uh, uh, good so so one easy way to identify better apps is when you go to play store and just type uh, uh, apps for improving spoken english or conversational practice you get number of apps but not all apps are uh, equally useful or have or maintain standard content so how do we identify better apps uh, one way of doing that is uh, looking at the rating usually apps in the google play store are uh, uh, given rating of 1 uh, star to 5 stars 
so any app that has a four star rating and above four four point five or five uh, are very good uh, apps and you should also another useful information is you should also look at the number of downloads so as soon as you click on one particular app you will get to see the rating as well as uh, the number of downloads so if there are many downloads like thousands of downloads it means that many people have already downloaded it and are using it uh, currently which means that okay that app uh, is a very useful app another important uh, uh, way to practice listening is radio channels so there are a lot of uh, radio channels that are run in english english uh, as a content english as a medium so these are uh, this is one of the ways in which you can uh, access easy ways and songs in english so whether it is a uh, movie songs or other songs uh, uh, those songs are uh, not uh, don't represent formal language uh, one advantage of listening to songs is a uh, uh, songs if you look at the flow the pace of songs uh, uh, songs are uh, a little faster than uh, uh, songs go a little faster than our uh, spoken english so the advantage is if we are exposed to something faster than what we normally speak we can easily understand uh, the general uh, the pace of the spoken english and another important advantage of listening to songs is the uh, pronunciation Uh, aspects how to pronounce uh, so we can easily catch uh, uh, songs uh, while we are being entertained so when you are while we are being entertained so when your goal is to learn informal english uh, songs is one of the interesting ways uh, so that you do not get bored you don't feel like you are learning something right and nowadays lot of uh, online web series uh, are available like prime and netflix uh, which offer you lot of uh, documentaries and uh, Uh, uh serials as well as uh, movies now we have so much of choice to exercise from to listen to but it is very important to understand uh, that all these contents do not offer you the same kind of uh, language so it is important to understand right some for example offer you informal language in informal context some of them offer you in formal context for example if you take news right the news uh, uh, channels when you watch when you listen to new channels uh, this language is very very formal documentaries again is very very formal cookery shows this language is not uh, very formal it's a kind of semi formal uh, context and uh, debates for example these are also formal in nature but if you take examples like serials movies serials and movies the language is very very informal so you have to as i said earlier you have to be aware of uh, your requirements or your learning goals so most of the time spoken english is informal so it is important that you select content that is informal that uh, includes uh, day to day interactions day to day interactions between people so if you think of uh, interactions uh, if you select content which have uh, interactions between people not just one way narration so these uh, kind of contents can help you learn pick up spoken english faster than uh, something like news what happens in a news in a news only the reporter is talking to you all the time you are just listening to him and the language that uh, is used in the news is one thing is it is formal and it is also reporting the entire content is only reporting so this is its limitation when you are listening to news you should understand that uh, you cannot uh, pick up or it doesn't help you in your uh, routine conversational uh, practice it can help you in reporting reporting is also one of our uh, important language functions so when you are not good at reporting for example you can watch uh, news but uh, if you are looking for language functions and regular day to day interactions uh, i would say uh, serials and movies uh, are have a better advantage in fact when it comes to serials and movies uh, you are not just listening you are also watching which means uh, not just the language there is lot of uh, uh, visible content so visible context so these context can help us understand the language very very easily for example when you are thinking of songs in youtube uh, 
type uh, songs with uh, subtitles or when you are looking for online content uh, in the form of videos documentary serials movies uh, uh, try to search for content with subtitles nowadays most of the uh, youtube videos that facility is created so when you are watching some content uh, try to see that there are subtitles so that uh, you can listen as well as see the language uh, so that you can easily catch or understand the pronunciation if you think of documentaries only one person is talking about uh, somebody or uh, some place or something very important so documentaries when you are listening to a documentaries you should know a lot of description will happen in documentaries somebody is using a very formal language to describe a place to describe a situation or to describe some people so this kind of language descriptive language you can easily learn through documentaries cookery shows for example lot of instructions are given because they show you how to uh, you know prepare a particular dish so lot of imperative sentences uh, uh, you get to practice debates for example what happens in debates though the language is very very formal uh, in debates lot of exchange happens as arguments uh, you agree and you disagree so lot of important language functions so in order to learn the language of argument debates can help you uh, improve uh, this kind of uh, language for example stories stories when you are selecting stories or books to listen select such stories which are not one way narratives select stories which are in the form of dialogues or conversation there are a lot of characters interacting with each other so what i am trying to say is though lots of choices are available you should know why you are listening to a particular uh, mode you should know if you are looking at that mode if you are practicing that kind of discourse what kind of language are you going to listen so whatever it is as i said please try to make sure that that discourse has lot of uh, interaction it is close to real life uh, conversation so then we can get a lot of uh, benefits so this kind of content can help us learn uh, english faster now the same thing applies to uh, read so as i said listening becomes a, a very important uh, source of input so along with listening uh, reading also can be can lend to our uh, a uh, rich source of uh, language language input so among the choices that we have uh, what to read these books the course books that we teach and stories there are a lot of uh, short story books and uh, novels you have plays you have uh, dramas you can read about different uh, essays there are a lot of classic essays composed by great writers and uh, you can read newspapers when it comes to newspapers newspaper is just one form one form or a one tool that exposes to you know information variety of information but a newspaper has again it earn lots of information newspaper has lot of reporting about incidents and events newspaper also has lot of standard articles and newspaper also has some kind of uh, text in the form of dialogue so you should know what you are looking for and there are a lot of articles that you can read to articles related to your profession articles related to life and uh, business it could be about your uh, sports so when you read something that you select uh, something that is interesting that is uh, related to your uh, context and as i said uh, same thing that applies to listening also applies here please select uh, the content which has lot of interaction for example compared to novels plays or dramas have lot of scope for uh, interaction between various characters so this is very close to how uh, language is communicated in the spoken english in real context so try to look for uh, such content or focus more on such content uh, so that your goal of uh, spoke improving your spoken english uh, Uh, becomes faster now why did i put the course books uh, in the first uh, place should you read the uh, course books as teachers this is something very important for us to understand should you really as teachers read uh, uh, course books 
we all read our course books before uh, teaching our lesson so should we separately read them what is there to read in them we regularly teach those uh, uh, lessons uh, most of the teachers think that uh, if you just uh, read and uh, know the story of a lesson that you're going to teach that is enough just know the meaning that is enough but there is a lot of language in there there's a lot of vocabulary in the story there's a lot of language functions in the story so you know you should, you need to read that uh, uh, stories before you actually teach them and analyze and make sure you are aware of all the words you are aware of uh, the spellings you are aware of uh, the pronunciation of those words you are aware of important language functions so this kind of analysis needs to be done before uh, uh, every story that you actually start to teach them this is one way of making sure that you know the minimum language before you teach a lesson as i said uh, as primary teachers we do not need a lot of english english is a life skill of course we need english uh, for our communication for real purposes but when we think of ourselves as teachers the minimum language that we need to teach in the classroom is decided by the text is decided by each lesson that we teach on a daily basis so before you actually start teaching every lesson uh, can you go through the uh, story to understand to analyze your own understanding so can you look for important words from pronunciation point of view from usage point of view can you look for important uh, uh, language expressions that you are not aware of can you try to understand the meaning so this is how we can make sure uh, we are aware of the basic english uh, as uh, teachers next so far we have looked at uh, listening and reading as important forms of uh, uh, input and uh, what to listen what are the important discourses and how to select these uh, discourses so when we listen and read we shouldn't just listen it's not about just listening or uh, reading in fact listening and reading is a part already uh, a part of our uh, lives because we have been teachers for so long so as even as students we have listened to lot of things we have read lot of discourses but when it is important to differentiate uh, just listening for information reading for information and listening for listening with the goal of language learning so this is what differentiate between just passive listener being a passive listener or a passive reader and being an active listener or active reader so what can make us an active listener or reader looking for new words so when you read or listen to something or somebody can you look for new words because that should be your key focus when you are looking consciously for new words that is how you can register the new words by paying attention look for key key phrases and functional expressions so there are a lot of key phrases in every communication uh, discourse key phrases that uh, represent the main ideas so can you look for or identify such uh, uh, key phrases can you look for functional important functional expressions that you are not aware of pay attention to word choice and style so all of us have uh, you know different word choice based on uh, uh, the storehouse of our vocabulary so pay attention to the speakers or the writers word choice and the style of uh, speaking observe key pronunciation aspects like accent stress and tone so the best way to learn accent stress and tone is not from dictionaries sir, but by paying attention to expert speakers when we are listening so this is active listener or uh, right, uh, reader so by being a little conscious when listening or when reading slowly we can uh, uh, practice uh, to become an active listener or a reader now we have talked about what to listen what to read what are the discourses so as i said along with these two input uh, skills uh, vocabulary and grammar also play an important uh, role at least the basic vocabulary and the basic grammar to start with now we have asked an important uh, question before should we learn vocabulary and grammar separately 
so my answer would be no most of your vocabulary and grammar are indirectly taken care by through your listening and uh, reading when you are reading various uh, different types of text when you are listening to different types of uh, discourses the vocabulary and grammar are uh, automatically or naturally mastered but the only thing is when you are exposing yourself to verses uh, look consciously for new as well as interesting words words that appeal to you words that uh, sound uh, uh, important and uh, stylish try to understand uh, the words contextual most of us uh, uh, do not actually uh, try to understand uh, when you come across a new word you may immediately refer to a dictionary but most of the time the context of the discourse actually offers us lot of hints so this is something important that we need to develop so try to see when you come across such new words or difficult words uh, try to understand them contextually most of the times you have enough context uh, the context offers you enough clues and help to understand even then if you cannot understand a word then try to look up in a dictionary and whenever you come across a new word if you feel that is very important for you as a user try to record that uh, uh, notes you can maintain a small notes uh, for vocabulary so whenever you come across when you refer uh, look up for a word in a dictionary just uh, note down that word in your uh, vocabulary register you can maintain a, a vocabulary register or you can also uh, make a small goal for yourself that daily i learn 5 uh, to 10 new words when you come across uh, when you are reading or when you are listening when you come across uh, just uh, identify 5 to 10 important words look them up in the dictionary and uh, write them write the meaning in your uh, vocabulary register so an important uh, uh, thing that you can do is uh, you know, when you look up these words and you understand the meaning uh, look at the example sentences from these dictionaries and try to frame your own sentence you can write these sentences in that vocabulary register and whenever you are free in the weekends or every two three days once uh, you can quickly go through this list of uh, words this can actually help you a next grammar as i said again should we learn or practice grammar separately not needed most of the times we are thinking of ourselves as uh, learners most of the times we don't need now if you think of ourselves as teachers because as teachers we may have to teach uh, grammar separately to students then we may have to learn it uh, separately from grammar uh, books but most of us are primary teachers so in the primary level we don't teach grammar uh, directly so there is no need as learners or as teachers to learn grammar separately but one thing we need to understand as teachers is uh, the difference between formal and uh, functional grammar so formal grammar is uh, all the formal knowledge about grammar that is uh, uh, different ways to you know the definitions of what is a noun how many types of pronouns do we have what is the sentence structure of past tense uh, so all these uh, are examples of formal knowledge so do we need uh, this formal knowledge as uh, learners of english definitely not what we need is a functional grammar so teachers who are teaching maybe at high school level need a formal grammar or they learn to they need to learn the grammar separately from grammar books but what we need is functional grammar as i said most of our grammar learning uh, is taken care uh, when we expose ourselves to good and rich uh, uh, listening and reading sources most of it is internalized automatically sometimes uh, we may have to focus separately so when is that for example when you analyze your own language proficiency and uh, when you take help of others uh, in seeking advice like what are your problems when you try to understand your own language uh, proficiency and identify that you have certain problems with certain grammatical aspects for example uh, when you talk about your daily routine you need to be able to use uh, the simple present tense properly so if you are making some mistakes uh, and if somebody tells you that uh, see when you talk about your uh, daily routine or let's say you are talking about your past activities your ability to use the verbs or the tense is not uh, proper 
so that is when when you identify particular grammatical item that you are not able to use properly that is when you can refer to a grammar book and maybe study about it and also practice so as learners what kind of books are important for us as i said functional grammar books are very important for us not all grammar books are same so when you are one of your goals is to learn basic grammar you should know that you should not refer to formal grammar books uh, rather uh, it should be functional grammar books for example renan martin is a very commonly used grammar book but that is a good book for learning formal grammar having formal grammar knowledge so that is more useful for teachers who teach grammar as an item but our purposes for our learning purposes we as users when we think of a, a spoken english needs what we need is functional grammar so one book that i would like to suggest you is uh, essential english grammar by raymond murphy so raymond murphy is the author and the title of the book is essential english grammar so if you go through this book you will see how these kind of books can help you practice the grammar in actual usage so they are designed in such a way that uh, they focus on the function rather than the form or the structure so so far we have in detail looked at uh, how we can practice and what are the discourses that we can practice what to listen to what to read to what kind of content should we select uh, and the relevance of vocabulary and uh, grammar so all these four aspects uh, form our input or these are all learning for us so when we expose ourselves to listening and we practice listening and we practice reading so all these uh, leads us to learn learn important phrases important vocabulary the basic grammatical structures now the most important thing is the output our ability to produce the language that is our spoken abilities so as we learn continuously as we practice these uh, skills uh, continuously as we continuously expose ourselves to listening reading uh, vocabulary grammar as we are continuously learning our knowledge our awareness of language uh, slowly starts to increase so ultimately these have to be used as i said practiced so even at the output level so we should speak ultimately we have to speak we have to use these uh, expressions if we do not use them uh, then uh, there is no point in putting all these efforts or doing this practice so the first thing that we need to keep in mind is as you are progressing in your exposing or regular practice to listening and reading speak at opportunity so whenever you get opportunities just grab those opportunities and start uh, uh, speaking so this is one way uh, of keeping your uh, practice uh, alive whenever you get an opportunity so all the times you may not get opportunities sometimes uh, you may have some thoughts you may want to say something but then there is nobody around you and every time you get that opportunity you have to remember that the opposite person has to give you some time to listen it is it is at the expense of others time so you may not get such opportunities all the time in such cases uh, what you can do is uh, write down your thoughts when you cannot uh, speak another interesting way is you can record your uh, uh, speech when you have some thoughts just talk and uh, record so nowadays with a smartphone it is so easy to record and once you to record uh, your thoughts you can listen to them several times and analyze it for your own understanding is there an improvement in your fluency is there an improvement in your uh, are there any grammatical uh, errors how is your uh, pronunciation your pace of all these can help you uh, uh, give you an idea of uh, where you are right now so that you can decide uh, what to practice uh, more and uh, when you record yourself or when you do write uh, uh, another important thing that you can do is share your write up or recording uh, to some uh, people around you people around you whom you think are better speakers and then you can seek their uh, advice for example uh, your primary teachers so if there is also a high school attached uh, uh, in your school 
you can actually talk to the high school english teacher or other teachers whose english is better than you to show these recordings uh, make them listen and uh, help you analyze with your language can uh, you know where you are and what you should do further and some important tips so now that we have seen uh, uh, specifically what to practice and how to select this from uh, the variety of choices that we have some tips or important things to keep in mind is the first thing is uh, by doing all these things uh, we have to create a language environment for us this is very very uh, important as all of us know native speakers of all languages including english uh, right no one actually pays so much of conscious attention to language learning because they have the language environment uh, all the learning uh, all their proficiency is a result of their language environment so we do not have an english environment so what we have to do is uh, we have to create a language environment uh, around us as a part of our daily routine by exposing ourselves to all these various discourses uh, whenever possible slowly add english uh, to your daily routine so all of us uh, as teachers uh, have already a busy daily routine and once we go home busy with our uh, domestic uh, uh, duties so it is important to take uh, uh, time but if uh, learning english or developing spoken english is one of your prime goals you have to be conscious and make sure slowly on a daily basis uh, you add uh, some english some new english to your daily routine you can start with uh, short term goals like i said before you can have a short term goal like daily i learn five words 10 words or this week i will focus on pronunciation pronunciation of words right uh, another week you can focus on uh, vocabulary vocabulary related to a particular register you know etc and uh, selecting appropriate materials is also very very uh, important so do not select materials that are not related to your profession or interest make sure the materials are contemporary contemporary means uh, latest they are latest uh, they are related to the present times the context and also the context are something interesting to you right so this is uh, how you can stay motivated rather than reading something that is not related to you or which is very complex or boring for you so selecting such materials can easily demotivate you and make use of online resources there's a lot of online resources available as i previously uh, mentioned so nowadays uh, technology makes it very easy to access these resources most of these resources are freely available so it's uh, important that we make use of these uh, resources and uh, another important thing is monitor or assess your progress from time to time this is very very important not just going on you know practicing but uh, now and then assessing yourself or monitoring yourself an important way as i already told you is one such thing is recording recording yourself and uh, uh, showing it uh, or writing something and showing it to your colleagues or uh, you know people who can speak better english than you take their feedback or taking some tests uh, Uh, for yourself many online tests are readily available as i said either in the print form or through online uh, platforms some platforms even give you free certifications so these are all various ways to assess so that you assess your progress and when you get to know your uh, results uh, if you see any improvements that can be a very big uh, motivation factor plus also you can decide uh, Uh, what to do next what are your next learning goals and most importantly grab opportunities to speak be vocal nobody will give you opportunities to speak wherever you are when you go to places in different contexts whenever you get an opportunity just grab and then try to speak if you follow these uh, uh, tips if you are conscious of these tips uh, slowly we can easily we can reach uh, our uh, goal of uh, mastering spoken english now we have talked a lot about uh, what to do what are the different sources how can we select this uh, content 
now it is important that we know what are some useful resources so as i said the uh, televisions youtube mobile apps there are a wide range of thousands of sources are there so how do we select uh, some important things so this skill comes only by practice so in today's session i want to introduce you to one important uh, resource there are so many videos in youtube there are so many learning channels and there are so many audio stories audio resources uh, online there are so many types of books uh, there are so many websites so how do we choose as i said one way is spending a lot of time online and personally uh, trying out these apps trying out these videos personally finding out viewing them and finding out uh, uh, what uh, sources suit to our uh, requirements so that is one way uh, another uh, important uh, tool that i want to introduce you today is uh, english language teaching gateway so though there are many resources online offline uh, i do not want to uh, you know su suggest you a few sources so at rie what we have done is uh, uh, RIESI Regional Institute of English South India Bangalore we have developed a platform called English Language Teaching Gateway so this is a platform developed by RIESI for the benefit of English teachers and uh, learners so what is this platform this platform has pulled up all important resources for English learners as well as English teachers it is the pool of selected and gathered online materials and resources which are all free of cost so we have gathered all these resources and put in a one platform and we call this as gateway english language teaching gateway so that you don't have to uh, bother yourself by spending long in order to browse those all these various sources so all different kinds of sources all the sources that i have mentioned so far what to listen to what to read to all those different kinds of useful sources are already a part of this uh, uh, platform so it is available uh, as both a website and a mobile app so if you are browsing from a computer you can go to the website or if you most of the time if you use your smartphone you can just uh, uh use or download the mobile app version of this so please go to this is the uh link for this gateway as you can see https riesi hyphen elt hyphen gateway dot webnote dot com so as this please note down this uh, link and once you click this link it will take you to this uh, gateway i'm actually i want to show you Uh, practically how this gate it goes you all through this uh, platform so that you know and you realize how important uh, uh, this one resource uh, uh, is asmat sir yes sir i have to request you to come to the room. Sir, while you are uh, starting screen share, no, this time you deselect uh, optimizing screen sharing. Screen. Oh, I should deselect, sir. Uh? Deselect. Eh? Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, sir. Is the website visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. all right yeah uh, so yes uh, uh, dear teachers once you click on that link once you go to the website this is uh, how the website uh, uh, looks like the home page looks like this so in short we call it elt gateway so as you can see english language teaching subject gateway now this is the web uh, site this is how the website looks like so as you can see here as you can see in the main page you have variety of links ebooks e journals useful mobile apps video learnings 
some important video resources for you as teachers textbooks online and what is called classroom guide we'll look at all these uh, a little later but i'll go i'll take you through how the main page looks like so and as soon as you come a little downwards you will find this mobile link elt gateway android mobile app so one important thing for all of you to note down is this mobile app is not there in google play store google play store it is not available so if you want to download this mobile you have to click here so open this open this link from your mobile open this link from your mobile go to this website and then just click on elt gateway apk when you click on this yeah so this is what you see download 2.3 mb it's a very small uh, memory it doesn't occupy very uh, large memory so click on this and then this app will be installed into your mobile now let's get back to the website so as you go downwards you have lot of e resources online for example reference sources so as teachers and learners we need lot of reference sources so britannia encyclopedia online so no matter what subject teacher you are lot of times we need to refer to the encyclopedia so this is freely available here and look at the number of dictionaries available oxford cambridge cambridge advanced learners dictionary for example let me click on this cambridge advanced learners dictionary just i click on this and immediately the online version of cambridge dictionary opens up for me so all you have to do is uh, go to this search bar and then type whatever word you are looking for so i am closing this now you can explore all this later so you almost have uh, all major publishing houses dictionary oxford cambridge merriam webster's collins dictionary and thesaurus when you are looking for synonyms and antonyms of particular words you have uh, uh, thesaurus uh, dictionary as well and grammar dictionaries and journals important english uh, related journals are available and if you are uh, doing research a research scholar if you are doing your mphil or phd you have lot of search engines uh, you know elt research database by british council google scholar you can here you can find lot of uh, uh, educated uh, and pedagogic related uh, standardly published articles you know shodh ganga open educational resources for teachers this is very important for teachers both primary and high school e pathshala for school children right and uh, egyan kosh by e gyan kosh by igno for both uh, ug and pg students pg pathshala for uh, pg students and swayam these are some uh, free online courses offered by mhrd and uh, aicte you know vocational uh, courses anyways these are all very general things but let us go back to now uh, our english resources so if you can see just by beside the home uh, link uh, you can find something called ebooks now i'm going to click on ebooks as soon as i click on ebooks it takes me to all important uh, english related books uh, online and the books have been categorized open access books so all these books are already freely available online so all these have been collected and uh, categorized for example first you have english grammar books and then you have english phonetics books and then teacher training books if you are not only a teacher but also a teacher trainer so what are the important books related to teacher training testing and evaluation if you want to learn more about testing and evaluation methodology related or if you want to more books about language games and activity books you have so many choices listening and speaking reading ebooks vocabulary based english literature books for example i am going to click on we are talking about uh, spoken english so let us click on english phonetics i just clicked on phonetics so we have a ready made list of all the 
books related to spoken english and uh, phonetics as you can see these are all very important books and for every book the online pdf version and the link is already available for example clear speech pronunciation and listening comprehension okay how to teach pronunciation all you have to do is uh, just go here and uh, click on this uh, link one click and your book uh, is downloaded for you so you can explore all these later after ebooks you have uh, something called e journals so this is a list of all professional journals related to english language teaching so as you all know as teachers we need to access uh, all professional knowledge professional articles these professional journals can uh, help us uh, give access to lot of important uh, professional in information all standardly published articles related to english classrooms so what are the teachers in india and abroad uh, doing in their classrooms what are the new methods that are uh, being uh, uh, followed uh, right now so the best practices all these are shared through all these important uh, journals so once you click on one journal you can easily access through various uh, versions uh, of these uh, you know various versions of these old and current uh, uh action uh, current versions of these uh, e journals so after e journals you have mobile apps so as i said uh, nowadays we have wonderful mobile apps uh, mobile uh, has the flexibility to give us instant uh, access to practice so again mobile apps all freely available useful apps are categorized here first you have dictionary mobile apps all which are available for free oxford advanced so you can click on this uh, and uh, now immediately install some of these are even offline offline means you can install these into your mobile and uh, even when you don't have the internet uh, you can use them that is the uh, wherever you have this offline mentioned against them next you have grammar mobile apps so as i said if you remember if you uh, if one of your learning goals is practicing grammar you have all important and useful and free grammar apps almost eight apps which you can download and start uh, trying and then you have pronunciation apps pronunciation apps english pronunciation english pronunciation e learning so once you download uh, these uh, just try downloading two or three and see which one is uh, easy to access for you next uh, this is something for uh, important for us as teachers courseware mobile apps nc so as i was showing you uh, the important uh, apps the important mobile apps so apart from e books we have already looked at e books e journals that this platform has full of all the resources and uh, this is a list of important uh, mobile apps as you can see we have dictionary mobile apps grammar mobile apps and pronunciation mobile apps so you can explore and choose uh, what is uh, very useful for you and uh, this last list of uh, mobile apps for young learners so these apps uh, are very important for us so you can personally explore and see what you can use and you can also make use uh, uh, for your children who have access to smartphones and then also have uh, i'm going to click on the link video learning so this link if you click this link you will find important video lessons on youtube which are actually hosted by ncert e gyan kosh uh, igno and uh, by patshala mhrd and daily conversational videos for spoken english so this should be very important for us instead of going through all the various videos because if you go to google or uh, youtube public platforms like these and when you search for content uh, you can have uh, thousands of uh, uh, choices so this is one selected series of videos daily english conversation videos for spoken english to so these videos when i click on this 
so this is the link that it takes us to this is one of the english learning channels which i mentioned earlier this is one of the english learning channels available for free on youtube so as you can see there are hundreds of videos uh, prepared for uh, uh, to help us uh, pra pra practice uh, and master day to day english uh, phrases and functional uh, uh, expression so you can uh, make use of this link this is a very important link for us next uh, english uh, sing sing where uh, you can explore songs for listening and also for teaching and uh, english lessons for children all these are uh, related to primary classrooms nursery rhymes kindergarten songs where most of the common songs and rhymes are uh, available as pre recorded uh, versions so you know how to rightly pronounce them if you are going to use these in your classroom and there are a lot of uh, uh, video learning resources pulled up uh, by british council british council india etc so there are almost 5 to 6 uh, uh, links you can choose to uh, explore all these links and after all these links uh, the last one as you can see you can see textbooks online this is very important for us as teachers most of our syllabuses are slightly different our textbooks are different from state to state but uh, all of them are followed uh, or they follow the ncert standards right the ncert learning outcomes based on learning outcomes so that way there are a lot of similarities uh, between uh, textbooks from one state to another state so this is one platform where you can access ncert textbooks andhra pradesh karnataka kerala telangana tamil nadu south indian context plus even you can have access to other uh, indian state textbooks as you can see gujarat gujarat chatisgarh jammu and kashmir you don't have to you are not teaching these textbooks so you don't have to uh, go through these but then you will know what is happening in the other states what are they teaching how are their materials and textbooks sometimes by browsing through these textbooks you may find interesting activities uh, to teach uh, certain concepts so all uh, the te textbooks of other states are uh, pulled up at one place and lastly the classroom guide as you can see here some important uh, lists and charts grammar terminology list of idioms and phrases important list of uh, idioms and phrases in english list of prepositions common mistakes related to prepositions so these are all wonderful pieces of information pulled up only for your uh, convenience so i personally feel for all of you to start with to start with uh, you can start with uh, this wonderful uh, website english language teaching uh, gateway and uh, this is a lot i feel to start with uh, and once you start using this once you get comfortable with all these tools uh, uh, later you can uh, explore on your own uh, on uh, online platforms various online platforms on your own as you start using these online resources slowly you will become perfect you will know where to go for what kind of uh, resources so hoping that uh, uh, today's session is uh, was useful to all of you and also hoping that all of you will start using uh, this uh, uh, platform english language uh, gateway for your uh, maximum benefit because lot of efforts have gone into uh, designing this uh, platform only for the benefit or convenience uh, of teachers like you so hope you will start uh, using this and take the uh, benefits of all this with that uh, i wish you all good luck in your uh, journey to spoken english so with this we'll uh, stop today's session and uh, over to ismail sir to for a question answer session ismail sir thank you very much sir yes sir thanks a lot uh, can stop share yes sir. yeah thank you very much so we have uh, we'll move to quickly quickly few questions uh, the first one is uh, dharmala jay kumar Uh, he is asking that is there a gene or genes that makes some people better speakers or learners? Is it because of genes? Okay, so uh, Dharmala Jay Kumar, <coughs> sir, he was asked that yes. question uh, from Bhimili. Dharmala Jay Kumar from Bhimili. 
ధర్మల జయకుమార్ సార్ వెరీ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ క్వశ్చన్ బట్ ఐ ఐ డు నాట్ థింక్ ఐఎమ్ ద రైట్ పర్సన్ టు ఆన్సర్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ మేబీ సైకాలజిస్ట్ a psychologist can better answer this question but uh, in my understanding uh, uh, a better speaker uh, one becomes a better speaker by constant uh, uh, practice so it depends on uh, it it is of course related to some of your personal traits personal characteristics which may be related to your genes but as such the ability to be a better speaker uh, uh is not directly related to gene sir i i could be wrong or right uh, as i said uh, maybe a psychologist is the best person to answer your question thank you very thank much you. sir the second one uh is it true that people who are good at uh, music can learn a language sooner people who are good at good at learning languages also yes those <laughs> okay people, that's uh, those are good at music question. those who are good at uh, music uh, i don't think there's a direct relation but uh, yes in my personal observation also uh, i have seen people who are uh, good at music uh, are naturally good at expressing uh, but again as i said it is not something to do with languages people who are good at uh, music uh, uh, maybe they are more vocal because they can sing they are loud they are expressive so the same personality trait uh, is uh, can also make them uh, very very vocal when it comes to speaking they can be loud they can be vocal they can easily uh, communicate so maybe there are some personal uh, things but uh, as far as i know i do not uh, see a direct uh, uh, correlation between uh, you know being good at music automatically makes uh, you know a good speaker thank you very much sir very good questions actually uh, so being a biologist i would like to focus on the first question where uh, anything uh, uh, related to intelligence physical or uh, technological or whatever the skills uh, somehow related to genes also so there, yes. there is a very uh, different variations in the genes are will also be maybe responsible also, and environment uh, is also on, has yeah. its own impact Definitely. thank you very for asking good question yes. uh, the second another question will take up sir uh, sir uh, uh, udaya kiranalu he is asking that is there any online platform which clear teachers doubts um yes sir actually there are many online uh, platforms uh, actually these platforms so there are different kinds of online platforms sir so when you go online to say for example youtube is one platform apps or uh, other kinds of uh, online platforms and websites uh, websites which give us lot of information are uh, 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 one kind of platforms but uh, the kind of platform that you are asking for uh, uh, you can easily find in blogs sir we call them blogs so blogs are different from websites so blogs are created by people of similar interest there are many online blogs uh, for people with similar interest for example there are uh, blogs related to cookery there are blogs related to sports similarly there are many blogs related to english language teaching as well as learning so just go to google and uh, type uh, uh, online blogs for english teachers so these blogs uh, can give you instant access to teachers from across the world some of them uh, may ask you to may allow you to log in freely and some of you may ask you to register with them registering by giving your phone number details etc most of the authentic blogs ask for your details because they are uh, more authentic so you can register uh, to one of these uh, blogs maybe local blogs i would suggest uh, uh, look for indian blogs rai also maintains a blog the link to that blog uh, can be found in rai website so just go to google and again uh, rai si.elt.org that is the website uh, for rai si 
we also run an uh, elt blog similarly there are many blogs you don't have to restrict yourself to one blog so find out something locally which is maintained by indian teachers so whenever you come across a doubt you can easily post there and uh, other teachers who have had similar experiences or better knowledge uh, will definitely respond to you sir thank you very much sir uh, another question a basic question uh, k venkat adurgarao which type of dictionary is uh, most suitable whether english to english or english to telugu which you, which one you suggest uh, yes sir that's a very useful question sir i'm sure uh, this answer uh, would be helpful for many teachers uh, sir that depends on your needs sir your needs and your proficiency level uh, for example let us say if you are really good with your mother tongue naturally we all are good with uh, our mother tongue and when it comes to english even english if we have above average proficiency uh, i would suggest all of us as teachers use uh, an advanced learners dictionary english to english advanced learners dictionary because when you look up for a word in this kind of dictionary normally teachers or many people think that dictionaries are only for uh, new words unknown words but an advanced learners dictionary is for us we are advanced learners all teachers are advanced learners so when we look up a word in an advanced learners dictionary it not only gives us the meaning uh, meaning spelling pronunciation various pronunciation aspects american pronunciation british pronunciation and uh, the grammatical aspects are there any important compound words phrasal verbs common mistakes in using that word and with lot of example sentences so i would always say all teachers should use an advanced learners dictionary cambridge oxford doesn't matter any any major publishing house as long as it is uh, these features will remain the same but if you are a very basic uh, english user uh, you are also trying to improve your proficiency right now and you are also using uh, in your classroom transaction bilingual method or multilingual approach that i have already uh, talked about if that is your objective then parallelly you should also use a, a bilingual dictionary so that you know what is the mother tongue equivalent and so that you you can understand better you can also if necessary use these mother tongue equivalents uh, in the classroom as a part of your multilingual uh, you know method or approach thank you very much sir uh, i will uh, take another last question yes sir uh, a question is uh, in my view vocabulary is depending on age of the child then what may be the maximum number of words that the student of primary can remember pushpraj gitulu uh, yeah pushpa madam i understand pushparaj, your pushparaj yeah, garu so i understand your concern it is very difficult to say uh, at a certain level uh, exactly what uh, number uh, number of words how many number of words uh, can a child uh, Uh, remember uh, there are various research studies there are various uh, uh, some similar studies have been uh, uh, conducted but uh, these results are uh, you know varied especially if you are talking from a, a children's uh, point of view but uh, uh, online you can easily get access to all these uh, uh, research study results so i personally have gone through some which say Uh, 300 to 500 words simple basic words are enough uh, at the primary level for uh, initial uh, learners since we are talking about primary children we can consider them as initial uh, learners but uh, uh, i would suggest you not to these uh, 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 possibilities why because most of what our children learn the words let it be words or let it be expression is determined 99% by the textbook content by the textbook content so if you are really worried about the vocabulary and teaching or learning of this vocabulary for your students uh, i would suggest uh, just make a list of uh, all the important words basic words uh, out of your uh, textbook uh, content uh, and prepare uh, vocabulary charts so this way you will get to know what is your target at a particular class let us say you are dealing third standard so as an english teacher make a list of all the important words uh, from communication point of view from all the units you analyze all the units 
identify so that you will get to know what is your target for vocabulary in that particular year so you can uh, plan and strategize uh, how to teach what kind of activities you can further categorize those words you know action words the words etc so that you can think of better strategies to teach these words thank you so much sir uh, thanks for today's topic uh, very good interaction uh, has taken place for that thank you once again tomorrow uh, on day 20 uh, there is a, another very interesting topic for us activities to develop speaking skills by professor ravinarayan garu from bangalore so uh, i request all the viewers stay tuned to our channel facebook as well as uh, uh, youtube both of us so tomorrow we'll meet for with this uh, interesting topic so for today we are signing out we can be our thanks to suman bandi garu thank you thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you and welcome